Well, hey everybody, welcome to the CB&Q and the CNW in Wyoming. I'm Mark Pruitt, Section Hand. Today is January 3rd, 2024. This is layout update number 50. I took it easy in the month of December. I only did small jobs around the layout. I took a bit of a break after all the work following the operating session in the month of November. I had a cold the second half of December, and actually still do have a bit of it, so that kept me out of the train room for several days. That, plus the holidays, meant that I didn't get a whole lot of work done on the layout this past month. Well, this being the first update of 2024, I wanted to stop and take a couple of minutes to talk about the help that the channel patrons have been to producing these videos this past year. Thanks to their help, I was able to purchase two really good pieces of equipment this past year. The first of those is the RunCam 2. You've seen a lot of video clips taken with that little camera over this past year since I got it in February. The second major purchase was the LED studio lights I talked about during last month's video intro. A minor purchase was a desktop tripod. The total cost of these items was somewhere around $250. About 50% of that came from support of the patrons, with my funds making up the rest. A very sincere thanks to all the channel patrons. Now let's move on and take a look at what little I actually did get accomplished on the layout this past month. Right after the last update video dropped, I began assembling a couple of older Walther's 10,000 gallon tank car kits. The only problem was, these cars had the same number. JMRI Operations Pro, the car forwarding software that I use, has the ability to handle cars with duplicate numbers. But as much as possible, I want each car on the layout to have a unique number. That eliminates ambiguity in switching and delivering cars to destinations. So I ordered some microscale decals of the appropriate size and font, then set about removing part of the number on one of the cars. Using an X-Acto knife, I scraped off the trailing five. I did as much assembly as I could while waiting for the decals to arrive, then it struck me. The five scraped off very nicely, so why not just leave the second car with a three digit number rather than adding a new fourth number? That's what I did. Now one of the cars has the number 1595, while the second one is numbered 159. I finished up both cars on the 8th of December. Also on the 8th, I decided to try my hand at weathering the Burlington Main Line a bit. Here's how it looked before I started. Using a variety of colored weathering chalks, I brushed them into the ballast on a very short section. Here's how it came out. This approach would wind up using a lot of chalk, and I don't think it looked all that good anyway. When I try again, I think I'll start with a thin wash of blackish brown paint to darken and add some dirt effects to the ballast, then add chalks for highlights. This is one of those filler projects. When I don't feel like doing anything else, I can spend 15 minutes or so weathering a section of ballast. Probably the biggest project I tackled during the month, and it wasn't all that big, was painting the unfinished sections of fascia west of Casper and in the Wind River Canyon. In mid-October of 2022, the fascia at Powder River and around past Shoban looked like this, and it remained that way until December 9th of 2023. I removed a total of four sections of unpainted fascia, the two pieces heading west from Powder River, and the two opposite Casper's engine terminal in the Wind River Canyon. Here they're all stacked on the table, ready to be cleaned and painted. Over the next couple of days, I cleaned up the fascia and applied bronze green paint. On the 11th, I reinstalled the sections west of Powder River, and the next day, I reinstalled the ones in the canyon. At this point, I developed a cold, and for the next several days, barely even went into the train room. 
Remember in late November I was renumbering that Spectrum 10 wheeler? Well, by December 19th I was feeling good enough to venture back into the train room and spend a few minutes working on... something. While I had finished up decaling the locomotive, I hadn't yet put the new road number on the back of the tender. So that's what I did on the 19th. I think this came out better than the locomotive did. What time I spent in the train room the next few days, and it wasn't very much, I used to install the TCS Wow Sound Kit into 1395. This locomotive is now ready for revenue service on the CNW line from East Staging into Casper and on to Lander, joining its sister, number 236. Here's what I got for Christmas this year a brass drover's caboose made by Korean manufacturer Boo Rim. I've been wanting a drover's caboose for some time, and finally I have one. For those who don't know, a drover's caboose was used to transport the stock handlers who traveled with their livestock to market. They were basically a combination of passenger car and caboose. This is an absolutely gorgeous model, but it was a bit larger than I expected, almost like it was built to OO scale rather than HO scale, though it does have HO trucks. I set it on the caboose track in Casper and holy cow, this sucker is big. It's substantially taller than a standard caboose. So I set it next to a passenger car and it still looked a little big, though not as oversized as it looked next to the cabooses. I did some research into these things asking questions on the MRH forums and got some useful responses. Yes, drovers cabooses tended to be on the large side. It was probably actually HO scale, for all that it looks bigger than I expected. Finally, I set it at the end of a string of stock cars at Powder River. Yeah, this looks about right. One of the comments I got after the last operating session in late October was that sometimes it was hard to remember which direction, left or right, was east or west on the layout. Since then, I've been putting together a set of direction placards in PowerPoint in my spare time. I put the signs together the same way I did the town names. I printed them out, glued them to O40 styrene and trimmed them to size, then gave them a layer of dull coat and used a sharpie to color the styrene edges black. Here's the one that indicates east from Casper, ready to be installed on the fascia. Here's how the Casper fascia looks now. Way down the fascia is the East to Douglas sign. Here are the signs at Powder River. I'll get the rest of the signs up before the next operating session in late February or early March. That's another one of those do it when I don't feel like doing anything else projects. I did do just a tiny bit of work on the S2, mostly preparations for installing the decoder just a couple of days ago. To be honest, I'm more than a bit intimidated by this, so I've tended to find other things to do to avoid working on it. But I'm about out of excuses, so hopefully I'll get started on it again in earnest this month. In addition to the two tank cars I already talked about, I added one more boxcar to the rolling stock fleet mid-December. This was another Walther's kit, about the same vintage as the tank cars. On December 25th, I posted my second annual Christmas Day layout tour. I mentioned in the opening that this was almost the last layout tour, and I guess that needs some explanation. The house we currently live in has a very small kitchen, so on occasion we've been looking around for a house with a bit more square footage. In early December, we found this place, a brand new house that had been on the market for a while. It's about a third bigger than our current house with a really big basement. I could rebuild the layout with the same amount of trackage with no multiple deck areas. Well, we were told the builder was very motivated and flexible since the house had been on the market for well over a year. We made an offer. The builder came back and said they wanted the list price and they would not come down from that at all. So much for flexibility. I will admit, I breathed a big sigh of relief when they said no. 
I really didn't want to tear down everything I've built in the past few years, even though I could reuse a lot of it in the new place. So, is another house going to come along in a few months? I don't think so. We've decided to look into an addition to expand our current kitchen and living room rather than move to a new house. So it looks like the CB&Q in Wyoming version 5 will go on a while longer. With that, December and 2023 came to a close. This month I'm going to try to make some more progress, real progress, on the S2. I'm going to try to extend the scenery a bit further west from the Powder River stock pens towards Chauvin. I still have that painted but unlettered Spectrum Consolidation to decal for the Burlington, and I'm going to try to start construction of Powell. I know I said almost exactly the same thing a month ago, but hopefully this time I'll really get to some of those things. Thanks for watching everyone, stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next month.